and before we start off with anything with this particular course let us just discuss about few things so my name is abhishek and i'll be the trainer for this course for you guys and in this course what we would be covering right so this would be the first question in your mind so uh, before going with the introduction and before going with anything else you guys may have some questions in your mind so let us just cover those faqs first then we'll be we will be coming coming back to the syllabus okay so there are few questions like what all will be taught in this course and will like get access to the video so let us just answer these so first question is what all will be taught in this course so we would be discussing about java web driver frameworks maven test ng jenkins and grid and is used but uh, i won't be suggesting it now because it is very old and uh, people don't use it much but still if you guys want me to discuss about it i can discuss about it as well right now the next question is will i get access to the videos see the thing is this session is getting recorded so you will be getting access to this particular session as well apart from that we have a whole set of videos already made up okay so if we go to this qtpselenium.com and if we go to this syllabus part okay selenium training so if we go over here you can see that all these videos are already available in your account okay so these you, you'll get access to these videos in um, plus the videos which are i'm delivering the lectures i'm delivering so you'll be getting access to these videos as well right now the next question do you record current sessions yes we are recording the uh, sessions as you can see on your screen as well that the session is getting recorded okay now next question which is um, say which many are concerned about that is is java required i don't know programming right so yes java is required but i'm assuming that you are aware of if for while uh, say if conditions right and for and while loops functions variables you are aware of these things how we can declare these and how we can make use of these okay nothing much will be covering everything else whatever is needed but i'm just assuming that you know the basics okay now the next thing that is i need help in my project to or to clear interview see to start working with selenium it doesn't take much time you can um, start working with selenium in 10 days you can learn selenium in 10 days right but to clear a interview it takes at least 6 to 8 weeks of practice it it needs minimum this much of practice okay now the next question what would be the duration of this course see the duration of this course should be 25 to 30 hours depending on the lectures okay now the next thing so how we are dividing it right so first 50 first half first 50% would be the web driver java test engine grid so we'll be discussing about these things in this then in the next half we will be covering about the framework or you can say that a project right so uh, could you provide also provide some kind of live project see we will be building a live project here okay so we will be building the whole project over here and we'll be learning how we can make use of it right now uh, in case if you guys want access to this particular syllabus sheet you can download this from from this particular link okay you can uh, take a screenshot of this and you can type the same link over uh, there on your systems right now coming back to syllabus now uh, let us start with the introduction of selenium what is selenium and why do we use it right so as you guys are already aware of this that is say let, let us just go to the official website of selenium it has been changed to selenium.dev now okay now the first thing that is written on the official website of selenium selenium automates browser that's it right so how it does that right how uh, we can make use of it to make our things work so there are a lot of things right simply it acts as a interface between the browser and the code so we specify something we want to do uh, perform some action on the browser for example i'm clicking on this link if i'm going to downloads right so 
this is the action now i can do one thing i can manually do this thing or in case of automation i can ask the selenium code to perform the same action right so how uh, we would be working with these things right now coming back to this so um, what exactly what we would be doing and say how would we be able to do work with it first of all see this is the selenium website you can download selenium from here but right now i won't be downloading it right now we will be downloading it in some time but the first thing as i told you selenium automates browser so what exactly it does let us just see that so suppose this is web right and this is my machine now my machine needs to interact with this particular web right usually what we do we interact directly considering i am a manual user and i'm using it right but this is not the case in case of selenium right so what is that scenario so the scenario is a bit different scenario now there is a intermediator okay so i'll be sending in the request to the intermediator i'll be telling the intermediator to perform some action this would interact with the browser then browser would perform some action right every time i'm doing something that is going to this intermediator and then it is forwarding that request right now for example i would want to click yes i can click right so click or say i would want to do something else say type so yes i can do that i can change i can provide the url which i want to open as well right everything we do in a browser okay so just a moment so everything we do on in a browser can be done in selenium right so all the human actions can be performed with the help of code okay now over here see uh i won't be wasting much time on selenium because you guys already have an idea about it right now over here what is the history and uh, future so we won't be discussing more about it right now the latest version is 3.141.59 which is here since last year okay so november 15 2018 it is here since last year and we would be making use of this particular version only there are other types of selenium versions as well it is available in ruby javascript we would be making use of java it is available in python and python and c sharp as well right and you can see that the latest table is this that is november 14 2018 right now over here what we would be doing next right so um, uh, why java is important right we have other languages as well but why java is important java is important because say uh, we need some platform to work with it selenium cannot work independently it it needs to depend on something right we can make use of ruby as well but again majority of the population does not have any idea about it how it works right now out of all these java is the simplest and easiest to understand as well right it is uh, similar to c++ it is not same i cannot say that it is same but yes it is similar to the major, majority of the concepts are same right so anyone who has worked with c++ ever in their life would be able to understand java as well right now over here before starting with selenium what things do we need first of all we need to install jdk okay so let me just jot it down as well so things needed first one is jdk okay so from where we will be getting jdk so simply what you can do is you can look for jdk 8 be sure that you are not using anything else i'll, I'll tell you about that as well i won't be getting uh, much deep into it but yes make sure that you are using jdk 8 only do not make use of the latest version of jdk those are not stable right now over here look for jdk 8 and then follow the first link okay 
click on this link and you would be taken to this particular page right here you can uh, accept this license agreement and you can click on the file you would want to download for example i'm using windows 64 bit so i'll be downloading x64 file of windows right if you're using 32 bit version of windows you can download this particular file and in case if you're using macintosh you can download this dmg and if you're using linux then you can download the file accordingly for example ubuntu users need to download this particular file ubuntu or you can say that debian based and if uh, if you're a user which uh, who is using a fedora based linux then you need to download this rpm right and again 32 bit or 64 bit according to the hardware you are using the processor uh, processor which is right now over here as i'm using windows 8 windows 10 64 bit so i'll i need to download this one now what you have to do just click on this and it will take you to this page where it would be asking you for credentials of oracle no need to worry about anything they won't be asking you for money just provide a username and password and click on sign in if you don't have account no need to worry click on create account and you would be taken to this um, page where you can create your account and then the download would start okay now over here the main concern why am i asking for jdk 8 only why are not other versions right so let us just tell this about jdk versions from wikipedia directly right i won't go um, i won't be going anywhere else right so over here if you see there are a lot of versions coming up java ac 13 is um, working right now in march it would be deprecated as well so they would be coming up with java ac 14 right La um, in this march in this year march they uh, released java ac 12 so they are coming up with new versions every six months you cannot cope up with that all these java versions are for purposes right and we as we are for um, we are intending it for personal use right and even if it is for commercial use we have the license till december 20 so they will be get, giving us updates till december 20 so no need to worry about it and you can see that the long term support is till march 2025 so jdk 8 is supported till march 2025 this means that other coming five years are also covered right other versions are not supported yet right and that is the only reason i'm straining on java ac 8 only this is the only reason that i'm concerned about it that you should use java ac 8 the best thing is that it is stable and yes the latest version has come up in october this year okay so no need to worry about it and see over here once you're done with jdk installation right what's next so we need something to be installed that is eclipse now what is eclipse and why do we use it right why do we have to use it right so first of all let us just go to this website eclipse.org right now eclipse is an integrated development environment right so what is ide this would allow us to write java code and the best thing is that this provides suggestions i can say that code suggestions as well right so we're we're doing two things now we're getting code suggestions right we get uh, we are writing the code and uh, it allows us to execute the code from it itself right we don't have to go here and there to execute the code we can write up the code in notepad as well right but still we need to perform few things before executing the code right so instead of having that kind of hassle we can make use of eclipse that would do everything for us right now coming back to this so this is the official website of eclipse and here you can download eclipse now over here what you have to do is that you just have to go to this particular link that is download right now here there are many versions right now you can use our latest version but it may slow down your system so if you are experiencing any kind of issues with your version 
right if you are experiencing any kind of slowdown with on a machine with eclipse you can simply download the older versions right so how you can do that just in case if the latest version is not working well okay you can uninstall the latest version and you can go to the older versions so eclipse archive right you can look for eclipse archive online and here there is a direct link that is archive.eclipse.org now you can download any version of eclipse which is ever made yet right so there are a lot of versions you can download the older version for example say you can download the version from 2017 or say 2016 these versions are stable 4.6.3 is very stable right you can download this and you can make use of this right now over here once you're done downloading eclipse then you would be able to start eclipse and see you need to have jdk installed before installing eclipse if it won't allow you to install eclipse before installing jdk now while while installing eclipse if you have not installed jdk it will lead you to install jre that would work in most of the cases but still in some cases you might need jdk so it is better that you install jdk already right now over here once you're done downloading and installing eclipse you may see a shortcut like this on your desktop i have not kept it on my desktop you may see a shortcut like this on your desktop right you can click on it and it would take you to a page and uh, just a moment so over here it takes a little bit time okay so it will uh, take you to this page now it is asking us for something that is a workspace address right now what is a workspace address and how would we be able to make use of it now workspace address is something that is the address of the area address of the location of the folder where we would be working on and we would be we would be keeping all our projects right all our files related to the say uh, to the test cases right any development of code now for example this is the path a batches october 2019 right i would be changing this path now so i'll be specifying the path like december 2019 right now right now this path does not exist so if i go to this directory a batches and you can see that there is no such path like december 2019 right so what i'll do i'll just create a new folder here and i won't have so selenium right and then we'll be creating a new directory over here that is december 2019 right so here i'll provide this path right now as you can see that the moment i click launch okay it will create a new directory over here named december 2019 this was not there already right eclipse has created this directory and it would be storing some files inside this directory as well right now what are those files those files would be the information regarding this particular workspace right where we would be working on from for the next 30 days right or you can say the next 30 lectures now over here you can see that there is a directory metadata and it has some version information and some other things right so let us not fiddle around with these things if you change these things you may lose access to the workspace so do not do anything over here right now over here just a moment uh, kumar you'll get the link later on don't worry i'll provide you the link okay and just a moment so over here now this has been opened eclipse has been opened now here you can maximize this and it is giving you some welcome screen so you can close this directly now there are a lot of things on the screen 
the left portion is the package explorer this particular part of the screen is the code part right then we have some other things we don't need outline so let us just close this we don't need, uh, need the smile uh, line okay so we'll close this and we don't need this task list so you can close this now there are three sections first section is the package explorer where you would be seeing all your projects and the files corresponding files here in this particular part you will be seeing the code for the particular file that you are opening right and here in the third section this is problems part so if there is any problem with your code you will be seeing that problem specified over here whether it is error or a warning you'll see everything over here instead you have the other things as well right now we don't have those things open so whenever you execute the code you'll get a console window over here and that would show the output right now how everything works right so what we would be doing is if you notice over here there is no directory right now right what i'll do i'll create a new project over here so create a java project right now we can specify the project name for example day one right so this is the first project what i'll do i'll click on finish now right now over here as you can see that there is a folder created day one there are a lot of things there are a lot of files created over here right there are two files and three folders created right but you can see that right now it is empty right now over here what things we can do so what are the things specified here first let us just see that first thing is the java library as you can see that it is using jre system library and i'm using java ac 1.8 by default it would be using jre only right you can mention it to use jdk as well we would be discussing about this later time uh, in the later lectures right now you can see that it is using java ac 1.8 now jdk 8 is 1.8 okay the later latest versions are uh, the other versions are uh, without one mark okay uh, one dot they are coming up directly for example jdk 13 would be jdk 13 written directly or you can say that java ac 13 okay now over here this is the java library and it would be containing some jar files so uh, um, these are the files which would be making use of while in while executing the code now there is a source folder now source folder is a folder where we can keep our code right now what we can do with it and how we can create a new file inside it so right click over the source folder go to new and you can choose the option class right now we can create a new class and whenever we have to work with java okay whenever we have to work with java we need to create a new class so we can create a new file and i would be specifying this as introduction okay so this is a file introduction right i'll click on finish and you can see that a new file is being created right now over here if we notice something there is an introduction file created over here in this directory as well that is source file right if i edit it with notepad plus plus not with eclipse right now you can see the same data written over here right whatever is being written over here right so this is a java file which you can edit right or you can say that this is a source code file right now there are two types of files first one is source code which we have seen already apart from this there is another type of file as well that is binary file now source code file is um, say it is just understandable by the java itself right but binary file is say platform independent it can be executed anywhere now the question is where it has been kept so whenever we work with the file okay there is a bin, bin folder created as well and you can see that there is a corresponding file created named as introduction.class now you cannot edit this file if i open it with notepad plus plus you can see that you cannot read it right 
there are few things mentioned but yes you cannot read this file so this is not a open text whenever you have to submit the code to someone else right and you don't want your intention is not to let the other person edit your code you can simply provide this particular kind of file and the other person won't be able to see your code and he, he or she won't be able to make changes to your code as well right so this is the difference between a source file and a binary file we would be working with the source files here in, in, in our case right and we would be executing see whenever we are making a development of some code right so we need to work with source files only we cannot go, go with binary files ultimately whenever you are executing the code a binary file would be created and that would be executed only but we need to convert a source file into a binary file every time now this uh, becomes a more tedious task let us not get deep into it right now and here coming back to the syllabus so we are done installing jdk we are done installing eclipse right we would be starting with first java program but first before starting with these things right let us come back to selenium and what are the things that we have in selenium right we have not downloaded selenium yet right and there are a lot of things in selenium so let us just go back now over here see this is java right this is the uh, selenium for java now you can see there are two options first one is download then we have a change lock and the third thing is api docs now if you go to this api docs you will be able to see a lot of things right what things like this so what are the classes inside it right and see we already discussed about a class this is a class name like introduction.java right now what all classes are there in selenium so these are the classes available in selenium for example if we want to open a browser right there is a specific class depend on say work for that for example if i want to interact with chrome browser we have a class named as chrome driver this would let us interact with the chrome browser right in the same way if i interact with if i want to interact with the firefox browser so here we have a class named as firefox driver for that particular browser now what if i want to interact with edge browser so we have the edge driver over here right so for any type of browser we would want to interact with we have a particular class for that and here you can find the information regarding these for example i would want to work with chrome browser right so i can go to this chrome driver part now i can read about chrome driver right so this would let us know that how we can make use of chrome driver and say what things it is implementing how it would be working with the things and how you can make use of this in your code as well right now over here there are a lot of things you have constructors and uh, different kinds of constructors as well right so we'll be discussing about these things later on now the question is how you can make use of selenium right so coming back to this the official website right and i'll be going to the downloads page and you can download selenium from here right simply click on this download button and it would start downloading and there is some problem with my idm so let me just disable it i might not have updated it so we don't have much time to update it right now let us just disable it right so click on download and you can see that a file is being downloaded of approximately 7.2 mb right now if you open this file you would be seeing a lot of things inside it now these files are platform independent so here third thing is selenium right which is platform independent right 
Now, what does platform independent means? So, platform independent means you can use Windows, right? You can use Windows, Macintosh, right? You can use Linux and even Solaris. So, you can make use of this code anywhere, okay? Wherever JDK is supported, you can make use of the code over there, right? Depending on the say a browser compatibility as well, but yes, you can make use of Selenium in all these four platforms, right? Now, coming back to the code, sorry, coming back to this, right? We can download Selenium here. So, as you can see, that this has been downloaded, and here there are some files, right? Now, there are some jar files, right? Now, what is a jar file and how we can use it? right so this would be the first question in your mind let us just vanish this now so what is a jar file so the full form is java archived resource right now over here this means that there are some files inside it there are some class files inside it which has been kept inside this particular file right now there are some other files as well that is lips directory now what are these files so again there are some classes and there are some files which uh, on which the selenium code that is this client combined 3.141.59 is depending on okay so we need to include all the dependencies as well so libs means libraries and libraries means that whatever the dependencies of this clients combined 3.141.51.jar has those files would be kept over here in this libs directory right now over here coming back to this so see what i'll do i'll just add the selenium jars so this is the um, uh, say file now to add selenium jars what you need to do is you need to extract these somewhere right so this is the file what i'll do i'll extract these and where i'll extract i'll simply extract them over here in this directory so batches and we have this uh, selenium directory december 2019 i'll create a new directory okay and i'll specify jars okay and here I'll specify selenium and I can keep the data over here. Now this will not affect our workspace, right? If you create a directory inside your workspace, that will not affect your system until or unless it has some dependencies on that directory, right? So this folder won't affect our workspace. This won't cause any kind of trouble to our workspace. But if we make changes to day one or metadata, then there would be some problems, right? So make sure that you're not changing the folders or changing the data created by Eclipse itself, right? Now, as we have kept some data over here, we have kept some jars over here. We can make use of these. So how we can add a jar library inside the project. So right click over the project here in Eclipse, go to properties. Then here we have an option of Java built path. Simply go there and now here go to libraries and simply click on add external jars. Do not click on add jars. Click on add external jars. Do not click on add library as well. This is the only option that you have to choose, right? Now I've clicked on add jars. Now I can move to the directory where my jars are stored. So batches, Selenium, December 2019. And here in the jars directory, in the Selenium directory, we have the first jar that we need to add, right? Now there are some other external jars as well. That is the, the library files. We need to add all these five, five files right we cannot ignore these i left some file over here that is the sources file so this would contain the sources only the selenium code sources we don't need them so that is why i'm not adding it right now over here okay did i add it just a moment 
I may have forgot. Yeah, I forgot. Just a moment. So we need all these files plus we need this particular file. Right? Apply and close. If we choose cancel, you, you won't be able to see all those files. Now, the moment I click on apply and close, you can see that there is a new uh, part created that is referenced libraries. Now, it contains all the jar files. For example, the clients combined 3.141.59. If I expand it, you can see that there are some folders. Inside this, for example, this Chrome folder, I can see that there is a Chrome driver dot class file. Again, you cannot edit it. Why? Because there is no source file available, right? We need to have Chrome driver dot Java available, right? So binary, this is a binary file. We can execute it, but we cannot see the code. This is the difference between a binary and a code file, right? Now, coming back to Eclipse, coming back to the very basics now, okay? We are done with the libraries part. Now, the very simple Java program. So the thing is how you print things, how you can work with the things over here in this, right? For example, you would want to print some data. First of all, you would be needing a method that is a main method. Now functions in Java are called as methods. So if I mention it as a method or a function, both of the things are same, right? Now, whenever you have to execute the code, you need to have a main method, right? You can say that main method or the main function, which is something like this public static void. Okay. Now what is public? What is static? We would be discussing about these things in the next lecture. We won't be discussing about these things in this lecture right now. Right. And the next thing is mean. So this is the first function that has to be executed in the code for the first execution. Right. Whenever you are executing the code, this would be the first method which would be executed. Right, the, or you can say that the default method. Right now, over here, what things you can do? For example, I would want to print something. Say, I would want to print hello. So, how would I be able to do that? Right, so simply what I can do is I can specify system dot out dot print ln. Okay. Now I can make use of this and I can print some data. So I can print hello, right? And if I execute this code, so this is the button to execute the code, run introduction.java. Now, if you're not able to see the button, no need to worry. You can go to your package explorer, right click over the file that you would want to execute and then go to run as and then Java application. Right now, it would ask you to do something that is save and launch. So what we can choose is we can choose the option always save resources before launching. Right after choosing this thing, you can see that this is executed and there is a output. Hello. Right now you are able to see the output. So I specified hello. This is getting printed. Now I can print another line as well. For example, I would want to print. something else so system dot out dot print ln right and i would want to print my name so my name is abhishek right so i can specify this that this is abhishek right now if i execute this code so i can make use of the shortcut now you can see that it is printing hello this is abhishek both of the things are in a new line right Hello got printed in the first line, then Abhishek got, this is Abhishek got printed in the next line. What if I would want to print the data in the same line, right? So I can remove the cell in part and I can make use of it directly. That is system dot out dot print ln. Again, there is a difference, right? What is the difference? Again, it is printing the data in the new line. Now, what is the difference? Let us just shuffle this. So print ln should be there in the next line but where i'm printing hello should have print only now i can execute the code 
and I can click on this button. You can see that this is printing. Hello, this is Abhishek in the same line now. So what is the difference between system dot out dot print and system dot out dot print ln? So print would print the data and keep the cursor. What is cursor? This particular cursor, the one which blinks, it is over here as well. So when I when I'm using print. It keeps the cursor on the same line, so it keeps it on the same part, right where it has ended. And the, when the when I use the next thing that is say system dot 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 print alien or system dot or dot print, so it starts printing the data. In case of print alien, what it does after printing the data, it moves the cursor to the next line. For example, this has been done over here. So the cursor has been moved to the next line and you can make use of it directly, right? You can see that the data would be printed in the next line. Now, for example, I can print out something. So system dot out dot print ln, and I can print some data over here, right? Say welcome, right? So I'm just printing in some dummy data. Now I can execute this code and you can see that welcome is printed on the next line. If I specify print over here, then welcome would be specified printed on the same line. You can notice it over here, right? So we need to make use of this accordingly. Generally, we would be making use of system dot out dot print ln only, right? Now you guys might have noticed something that I made use of some shortcut, right? So what is a shortcut? So what you can do is in case when whenever you're working with uh, Eclipse. Right. The best thing is that you get the shortcuts as well. For example, I would want to make use of this command. I would want to print something. So I need to type this whole thing that is system dot out dot print ln. But yes, we have a shortcut as well. So if I hit SYSO and I hit control space, you can see that automatically it printed this thing. Right. That is system dot out dot print ln. Now, what is the shortcut that I used, right? So the shortcut I'm using is control space. Just type in SYSO and hit control space. It would complete it, right? Now over here, this, this is done. Now the next thing is the very basic is code commenting. You're doing something, but the thing is that you are not the only one in the team. There might be other people working on the team as well. Right. So they need to understand the code, what you've written, right? What you are doing over here. So in this case, what you need to do, you need to specify code comment so that the person who is analyzing the code would be able to understand what I, what you have done. Right. So th for this, we use code comments. Now code comments are of two types. First one is single line comment. And the second one is multi line comment. Let us discuss about for single line comment first. To specify a single line comment, you can just make use of this thing that is double forward slash and specify the text you would want to. For example, this is a single line code comment, right? This is not affecting the execution, but this is letting us know that there is some data, there is some comment over here, and you can tell the same, the another person from this particular part that what you're trying to achieve, right? Now there is a shortcut to co comment out the code as well, right? So the shortcut is control forward slash. It would immediately comment out the line on which you are. For example, I want to comment out these two lines as well. I'll hit control forward slash and this will comment out the lines. See the benefit of using Eclipse, you can immediately comment out the lines. You can immediately uncomment the lines as well. So again, highlight the code control forward slash. Okay. And uh, again, highlight the code like this, then control forward slash and the comment would be removed. Right. As you can see over here, the comment has been removed. So this is about a single line comment. What if you would want to specify a multi line comment, right? So forward slash star and you can specify the data. So this is 
a multi line comment right so over here you can specify this thing that whatever you would want to specify there is some more lines of code that you would want to comment or there is some more lines of information you would want to provide you can make use of this multi line comment code comment it starts with um, forward slash star and it ends with star forward slash whatever data is which has been mentioned over here in between would be considered as part of the comment only okay so this is how you can specify code comment now coming back to the syllabus we are done with basics of java right we are uh, done with concept of a class file we are done with concept of a jar file right we are done downloading selenium jars we are done configuring selenium jars as well and we have we are done with the sample java program as well right but again we would be discussing more about this program then we would be coming up to the debugging part right so suppose we have this right now what i'll do i'll just remove this thing and now we'll be starting with the variables for example we have a variable a right then we have a variable b as well now there is no data inside these two variables right right now okay so what if i want to specify data i can specify the data like this and i can specify the data for b like this right now over here if you do uh, if you see something there is a warning what is that warning if you highlight the cursor if you move to the cursor over that warning it is saying the value of the local variable a is not used and for the same b it is giving us the same warning right now what we can do we can print this data as well what i'll do i'll just specify int c as well right now as you can see that it is again uh, telling us that value of local variable c is not used let us just initialize c c is equal to a plus b right we're just performing in a small operation and now we can we want to print the data so we can print that data as well system dot out dot print ln a system dot out dot print ln b right and system dot out dot print ln c right now if i run this code right if i run this code with this particular button you can see that it is printing 10 12 and 22 which is correct right now the next thing that is the debugging part so suppose you're facing any some kind of issue with the code right so how would you be able to say uh, debug it now what is debug debugging this means that how you would would you be able to resolve that problem or how would you be able to get to that problem that there is a problem right for this we would be uh, using debugging part now instead of executing the code like this what we would be doing is we would be debugging it with this particular button but before debugging we need to have something that is a checkpoint for example i feel like there is a problem in line number four i can double click on on this number four and just a moment okay so uh, right now it is not working the part is not working what you can do right click over the number and you can choose the option toggle breakpoint okay and it is not okay so see right now i'm just declaring variables that is why it is not allowing me to have a breakpoint over there because there is no data initialized i can have a breakpoint over here in the seventh line before that if i want to add i cannot add right because there is no data so in the line number seven i can have the debugger initialized now what i'll do i'll just um, debug the code with this particular button now it is asking me to go to this perspective switch right now we have not discussed about perspective so let us just click no and you can see that the code has paused over here highlighting this line number seven 
right now a is empty b is empty right and c is empty right now the code has been paused over here this means that it won't do anything else right now now what if i want the code to move to the next line and execute the current line right now there is an option for that you can do one thing you can choose uh, make use of this option that is step over that is you can hit f6 on your keyboard now as a has executed as line number 7 has executed you can see the value of a has been initialized which is equals to 10 b is not initialized yet so that is why it is showing us null right now what i'll do i'll hit f6 again on my keyboard and the code would move to the next line now right so f6 now over here b has also been initialized so b is 12 if i hit f6 again we have not printed a b and c but we are aware of the c's values as well that is 22 how it got calculated 10 plus 12 equals to 22 right so this is what is happening around and if you are facing any kind of issue right you will get to know about it over here right so uh, say you got to know that the line number 10 is having some issues or line number 9 is having some issues you can rectify the code over there directly you don't have to fiddle around with the say code and you don't have to look here and there for the solutions right so the problem you, you can look for the problem you can look for the root cause of the problem over here with the debugger directly we would be making use of a debugger a lot whenever we would be facing issues we would be making use of debugger so that we'll get to know what is the problem from where we are getting the problem right now over here see uh, i told you about the perspective what is a perspective so this is the view of the screen right now for example for the java code you might not need much of the things but for debugging part you might need a lot of things right so you can move the you can change the perspective now you can click on this open perspective and you can click on debug it will take you to the debug perspective there are few things right now you are able to see the variables what are the variables which have been initialized you can see that a is having the value 10 b is having the value 12 and c is having the value 22 we have the breakpoints that is at the line number 7 which i've specified right and the expressions there are no expressions so that is why it is empty we can close it the major things would be breakpoints and the variables apart from this everything else is same <laughs> right now you can go back to the java perspective by clicking on this particular button and you're done right so this was about the very basics right coming back to the syllabus we are done with these part right now in the next lecture what we would be starting so we would be starting with concepts of object oriented programming we would be learning how we can create objects and what is static and non static what are the basic drivers what is a system class static right we made use of system class but right now we have not discussed about it so we'll be discussing about it what is the concept of constructor how we can use it right and we'll be discussing about the drivers as well that is chrome driver internet explorer driver edge driver and firefox driver right now see um, in the next lecture we won't be directly starting off with selenium because if we directly start off with selenium you won't be able to uh, say uh, understand the things how the things are going around that is why i am covering java part first then from this particular part from this particular day that is day three we would be starting with selenium okay we will be discussing about how we can start working with selenium and what are the things we can do in selenium right and from day four everything we do on the project on in our lectures would be completely about selenium everything after this particular topic actually everything is really related to selenium only okay so this is our syllabus and this was our today's lecture if you guys have any queries you can feel free to ask thank you any queries guys 
You guys can unmute your mics. Yeah. 